Hey everyone, Ryan Bolton here, local mortgage expert. Today I'm gonna take on ChatGTP. It's a program online, it's an interactive AI program where you can pose questions and it'll kick out answers or it'll come up with questions. It's got a whole bunch of things in here. It's actually pretty fun. So I've been seeing a lot of videos on YouTube and some of the channels I watch have been doing these videos and I thought, why not do one on mortgages? So let's see if ChatGTP can stump the mortgage nerd. <laughs> All right, I've opened up the chat GTP browser thing here. Let's, uh, all right, let's just try a real basic question, shall we? Let's just do what is, oops, what is a mortgage? Boy, mortgage, there we go. Okay, let's see what this thing comes up with here. All right. A mortgage is a type of loan used to, re to finance the purchase of a property, typically a home, the borrower, also known as the mortgage or or borrower, yeah, borrower, agrees to repay the loan plus interest over a specific time period, usually 15 to 20 years. The property itself serves as collateral for the loan, which means if the borrower fails to make the payments, the lender, also known as the mortgagee, has the right to seize the property and sell it to recoup their loss. That's great. That's got a lot of information in there, but that's actually a pretty good summary of what a mortgage is. So let's see what kind of questions this can generate for us. Let's see. What are some mortgage questions let's see what this comes up with okay oh boy oh boy here we go <laughs> oh i wonder how many this will do oh all right so it does 15 i wonder where it comes up with the number for that okay all right uh let's see here are some common mortgage related questions what is interest rate on a mortgage well that's pretty simple that's the rate that you're paying on top of the principal. So you borrow a principal amount, the interest rate is what you're paying back on top of the principal. And amortized over 30 years, it's a lot of interest over the time of the entire 30 years, but interest rate is what determines your payment on the mortgage. Also part of a mortgage, you're gonna have the taxes and insurances, HOAs, there'll be other fees on top of just the mortgage, but the mortgage payment is a big factor is the actual interest rate. Let's see, what is the total amount of the mortgage that depends on how much you're putting down. It depends on what we call loan to value. So you'll have a purchase price at 500,000 or whatever, your, pay, your loan amount will be 475. So the loan amount is the actual amount of the mortgage. What is monthly payment? That's okay, that's the payment on the mortgage. What is the down payment required? So uh, down payment requirement is based on credit scores. There's programs that are 100% financing. They're usually on 5% tiers. So you're going to be 5% down, 10%, 15, 20. So every tier is 5% typically. So there's really no benefit to say put 7% down or 12% down. You're in that same tier. So every tier has a little different uh, program guideline, interest rate, that type of thing. Uh, what is the term of a mortgage? Term is the 30-year part of the mortgage. So a 30-year term is a 30-year repayment or 360 months of payments. So if you have a 15-year term, that's a 15-year loan. You can have a 25-year term. So term is another word for how long the mortgage is going to be out for. Let's see what else we got. Is the uh, interest rate fixed or adjustable? So there is some mortgage loans out there that are just 30-year fixed, 15-year fixed. The rate's fixed the entire life of the loan. The only things that will change on a mortgage payment on a fixed rate mortgage is taxes and insurance or maybe HOA. Those will change as property taxes go up, as insurance changes, or if the HOA goes up. But the mortgage itself won't change on a 30-year fixed. The next option is what they call adjustable rate mortgages. These are loans that can adjust. The interest rate can go up. What they typically have is a fixed period. There's three, five, seven, or 10-year adjustable rate mortgages, or what's called ARMS. It's an abbreviation. So it's fixed for that initial period, then can adjust after that. They can adjust every six months, every month. Most common is once a year. So they'll be fixed for say five years. Then once a year after that can adjust. They even have some features where they could possibly go down. But most of the time that starting rate is the floor. The top rate is usually 5% above the starting rate. So it can move somewhere in that range. So they're a little more complicated. They're a little bit more designed to be a shorter term loan. Maybe you got somebody that has to relocate a lot for their job or something where they know they're going to be done with school. They're going to want to upgrade. They're going to want to have more kids. Maybe they want to turn the home into a rental. So they know they're not going to keep it for 10 years. Maybe they won't even keep it for five years. So 
I often show people that, hey, if it's a shorter term home, don't worry about doing a 30 year fixed. If one of these arms saves you a little money for the first five years, and then you're going to be selling or doing something after that. I would say over the last, really since 08, they haven't been as popular. Uh, adjustable rate mortgages aren't nearly as popular as they once were, but they are starting to come back because fixed rates have gone up. So that's the difference between a fixed and adjustable. Boy, we're not going to get through all these questions. So let's see if there's, let's do this. Let's do, uh, let's see if we can find some hard ones. What do you say? What are five hard mortgage questions? Let's see what this comes up with. Ooh, here we go. All right. We'll let this load for a second. See if it can stump me. Oh, my phone call coming in. All right. Let's see what we got here. All right. Here we go. Stump the mortgage nerd. Can I realistically afford the mortgage payments, including property tax insurance, while still covering my other living expenses and saving for the future? So this is obviously more of a generic question. I, I mean, it's hard because I don't know all the information to be able to answer that question for you. But it is something where you want to have some savings in the bank. You do want to have at least six months worth of your expenses in the bank. If you get to the point where you have to put all your money down to buy a house and you lose your job or get hurt or something happens, you don't have anything to fall back on to maybe either turn that home into a rental, get roommates, sell it, move, whatever you've got to do. You want to give yourself a little more reserves is what we call it or savings in the bank. Can you realistically afford the mortgage payment? Yes, depending on the mortgage payment. Now, if it's a million dollar home, probably not. 250000 Maybe. So part of my job is to say, okay, based on your current income, this is how much you qualify for. Most mortgages want to take your existing mortgage payment or the mortgage payment you're going to have with your existing debts, total those up. They don't want to see that over 45% of your income. So as soon as you get over that amount, there needs to be compensating factors. I mean, they will go higher, but kind of under 45 is kind of a magic number. So if you're way over that, then that's where the answer might be no. If you're under it and have some res reserve and some room, then absolutely buy a home. You're going to have a housing expense, whether it's a rental or a mortgage. Mortgage is better. There's never going to be a time where the same mortgage payment to the same rental payment, you're gaining more benefits on, on renting. Really, you're not. Now, typically a mortgage for the similar type of home is going to be more than what you would pay to rent the same home. But if you're paying $2,500, bucks, 3 grand, three grand a month for rent, and you can easily do that with a mortgage. So why not look at your options to actually own a home? All right, next question. If I have a variable interest rate mortgage, that's an adjustable rate as well or variable, how high can the interest rate go if the market changes? How could this impact my monthly payments? Obviously, if the rate goes up, the payments are going to go up. Now, a quarter percent isn't going to be a typically a huge change to the payment, but it will go up. But every adjustable rate mortgage out there has caps. They're going to have a floor and a ceiling that no matter what happens with the market, it'll hit that ceiling. And usually each adjustment also has a ceiling. The first one's always the biggest one. So let's say it's a five-year fixed. At that five-year mark, that 61st payment, they'll add your index and your margin, which will be right in the note. It'll be in the paperwork. The index is what changes. So this is whatever index it's tied to. It can be tied to the Fed's fund rate. It can be tied to used to be called LIBOR, which is a London index. There's T-bills. There's all kinds of indexes that are out there. So whatever it's tied to, that's what can change. The margin is what is locked on an adjustable rate mortgage. So you'd add the margin plus the index. That's your new interest rate. Unless that is moving so much more than the rate you're currently at that it hits a cap. So there's caps all over this thing. It's not designed to go from say 5% to 15% overnight. It'll never go that much. But usually that first adjustment is the one that can move the most, typically two, up to 2%. After that, it can usually go once a year, usually 1% and anywhere kind of in between there. So it actually can go down. Let's say you got a five-year loan and it goes up 2%. And then the next time, you know, a year later, markets come down a little bit, the rate actually can go back down. There's usually a floor and a ceiling. Most of them are around a five-point ceiling. So it can't go more than five points. And it would take a few years for it to max out, even if the market's gone to 50%. You know, so not that it ever would, hopefully. But it is something where adjustable rate mortgages are scary if you don't know exactly how they work and if you don't know it going into the loan and why and how they can adjust. Once you kind of know those things, they're not actually as scary as they, as they seem. And 
many, many people don't keep their homes 10, 15, 20 years. They're five years. They keep the home for five years either because they want to upgrade, downgrade, move to another area. Kids need another room. I mean, that's kind of what happens with most homes. So hopefully that answers the question. Obviously, again, if the interest rate goes up, the second part of the question, then the payment's going to go up. Just look at the terms, look at the note. It'll all spell it out. If you need me to review that for you, I'm more than happy to take a look at an adjustable rate mortgage you have and tell you exactly what it would change if it was going to change today. So you know how that's going to work and how it's going to affect your budget. Next question. What happens if I lose my job or face other financial hardship and no longer can afford making the home payments? Will I, or the mortgage payments, will I be at risk of foreclosure? Yes. Now, many lenders will work with you. Maybe they'll do a forbearance. Maybe they'll work with you on your new income. If if it's something where you lost your job, but now you found another job. I mean, they don't really want to foreclose. We don't want to, that's not the business we're in is foreclosure. We're in the business of loaning money. So it is something where they're going to try to have steps to help, but it, it's not going to be in every situation. There's going to be times there's going to be foreclosure. People are going to foreclosure because of loss of job, death in the family. It happened. It's a natural part of any kind of financing, whether it's a car or a home, you don't make the payment, you don't keep the stuff. <laughs> so, but a lot of times I'll tell you, a lot of lenders will work with you to say, okay, we'll give you six months to catch up. We'll give you a year, work with your lender on it. I will say this, if you're in a foreclosure situation or you've got that notice to default, you missed a payment, they are going to keep some of the foreclosure process working through, even if you're working with their loss mitigation department, forbearance, modification department, whatever they call it. They're going to keep the process moving because a lot of laws to foreclose require waiting periods. So it requires people um, time to try to save their house. And there's just usually almost every state you have 90 days. So once a lender actually says, okay, you've missed a payment, we've now given you notice, you have 90 days to work something out before it goes to the next step of foreclosure. I've seen people stay in their house for over a year while they're working on this stuff. And then they're able to save it through a refinance or, or some other means. So really, yes, the home is collateral for the loan. If you stop making the payment, the collateral gets taken away. All right. How are we doing on time? All right. We're doing okay here. Number four, are there any hidden fees or costs associated with the mortgage, such as re, as prepayment penalty, origination fees, or mortgage insurance? So hidden fees as really... I don't know of any hidden fees in a mortgage anymore because after the 08 crisis, they've standardized a lot of the forms that we use as lenders, especially on the disclosure period. So we send out what's called a loan estimate. And it's the same form, whether you use me or any other mortgage company out there. Once you get to a certain part on the application, that form gets triggered. That form, maybe the names will be different. Maybe they'll call it an administration fee, funding fee whatever fee they want to call it goes in a certain section, no matter what it's called. So it'll be in that section and you can compare any other fees that kind of fall in that bucket, so to speak. Some of those fees cannot change, increase, or just be added to your file. So if we don't disclose it. We can't charge it. So there isn't mortgages are more disclosed than I think they've ever been. I've been doing home loans since 1999. And I tell you what, the process is amazing at disclosure, 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 and usually worst case, and it gets better by the time you go to closing. And now, three days before you even walk into the title company or get a notary to your home, they have to send you a final closing disclosure that is all the numbers you're going to see at closing. Now, there can be little tweaks. Maybe the day you close changes. Maybe the seller can't get there. You had to reschedule. So there's still little boxes that can change a little bit. But it's way more upfront. Clients know more about what's going on with their loan than ever before. There really isn't anything hidden. There's no, it's all up front. It's all on the forms. They're all standardized. There really isn't hidden fees associated with a mortgage like there once was. So there is some specific questions here, such as prepayment penalties. So this is a fee after the loan. So it's not associated with getting the home, but let's say you have a prepayment penalty on your loan. That means that if you sell or refinance before that period, they can charge you additional interest. Usually it's around six months worth of interest. I've seen other prepayment penalties that are different, but I tell you that the most common is six months of interest. And usually it's on 80% of your balance. Now how that works, because you can, you can accelerate the payment. You can be paying extra. It's just paying it more than 20% off. So the only time it really kicks in is a refinance or a sale usually. It's not, or maybe somebody gets a large inheritance and they want to put a big chunk onto their mortgage. So that's when these prepayment penalties can kick in. But I tell you what, they are virtually gone. I haven't seen a lot of prepayment penalties in years. 
they're almost all gone. They're starting to creep back on some loan programs, but you don't see prepayment penalties very often. Origination charges, that's when you buy the house. Again, that's right up front. It's not hidden. It's not like you'll be like, oh, by the way, here at closing, here's an invoice for your origination fees. <laughs> you know, it's it's disclosed from the beginning, the end. I mean, it's in there every single time. It's not something add back in later on. The last one here is mortgage insurance. That really, again, is not hidden. It's right up front. It tells you how much it is. The trick is trying to get rid of it down the road. Most mortgage insurance, you have to keep five years, regardless of what the home is worth. Most drop off after 10 years. So you got to keep it between five to 10 years. There's some programs you can't get rid of it at all. FHA, you have to keep it for the life of the loan. But most of them are five to 10 years. Most people think as soon as I have 20% equity, I can get rid of it. That's not typically the case. First of all, it has to be 78%. So you have to have 22% equity. And most of the time, they're going to go off what you originally paid for it or the original value, not the appreciation you've received on it. So usually in those situations, it's you paying extra to the loan that can re uh, remove the mortgage insurance, not the home going up in value. Mortgage insurance is a tricky thing, but most people, almost all of them, you have to keep five years no matter what. After five years, getting rid of it can be a little bit sticky. Honestly, the mortgage company wants it on there. They want it on there for the life of the loan because it minimizes their risk. If they do have to go into foreclosure or something happens with your job, they've got that extra insurance that if the home sits there for 12 months or goes into bad repair and they have to sell it at a loss, that insurance then kicks in. So mortgage companies want to keep that on there. All right. We've got one question left. Hope you're having fun watching the video. I, I think this stuff's fun. Uh, but hey, I'm a mortgage nerd. What, what do you want from me? <laughs> All right, last question here on this list. How long will it take me to pay off the mortgage in full? And how much total interest will I pay over the life of the loan? Is there anything I can do to pay off the mortgage faster or reduce the total interest paid? Okay, a couple things going on here. How long will it take to pay off the mortgage in full? It's a 30-year loan and you make the minimum payment? 30 years, 360 months, okay? How much total interest will I pay over the life of the loan? If you're making that minimum payment, the best way to do it is take the interest rate, divide it by the loan amount times 12. There's some formulas you can figure out on the total interest you're going to pay. Here's one other little trick. If you take your payment, not counting the taxes and insurance, mortgage insurance, HOA, just the principal and interest, times it by 360 months, then minus your original loan amount. That's the total amount you're paying over the principal on the loan. So there's a quick little formula. Again, I'll do it again real slow. Take your uh, payment, not with taxes and insurance or mortgage insurance, any of that, just the principal and interest, times it by 360 months, then minus the original balance. That'll tell you how much interest you'll pay over the life of the loan if you make the minimum payment. Now realize that the first five years of mortgages are a lot of interest. You're amortizing it over that long of a period, it's gonna have a lot of interest on the first five years. So any extra will help to minimize that and cut some of that interest off the front end of the loan. Um, so that's a, a nice little tip there as well. All right, let's see what is this other question. Is there anything I can do to pay off the mortgage faster or reduce the total interest paid? Yes. Any extra that you pay every month goes right to principal. So the next month, as it calculates the interest, your principal is lower, your interest is less. So any extra you put towards the mortgage will help it pay off faster. So really, it's just coming up with more money to pay it off faster. So a lot of times I tell people to round up the payment where you can. But honestly, and this this might take us some time here, but Extra money on a mortgage is great. Don't get me wrong. I, round up your payment. If it's seventeen eighty, just round it up to eighteen hundred. You know, round it up so where you're paying that little extra can help over the long run. But honestly, an extra twenty bucks, fifty bucks, hundred bucks on another debt usually goes a lot further than a mortgage. So why not get other debts gone? Remove that five hundred dollar payment. Now you can put five hundred bucks towards the mortgage. Then you'll really start to see it accelerate. But I'm a big believer: get six months worth worth of reserves first. Before you start paying extra no mortgage where you can't get that money back without selling or refinancing, what I really recommend is get six months worth of reserves first, then start tackling the smallest bills first that you can close. Too many times people will tackle their $15,000 credit card because it has a higher rate or, or whatever that it is, but the extra money to that doesn't, doesn't seem to build up any momentum. Where if you can put 100 bucks extra to a smaller card and see it get paid off, there, there's a sense of accomplishment. There's a sense of momentum. I think it's a really, really good strategy. Now, obviously, the higher rates matter. You do want to get a loan where more is going to principal quicker by having the lower rate. But I think it's really important to snowball. It's called the snowball method. Take those lower debts, pay them off, eliminate the debt. Don't just 
keep the credit card, you know, close it, whatever you need to do, roll that debt, that payment to the next card and the next card and the next card. Mortgage really should be the last one. It really should be. It's a fixed locked in payment in most cases. It's a lower debt payment than any other debt. And the biggest thing is more extra money to a mortgage won't go as far as extra money to a car, visa, something else that's out there. Then when that's done, then you can start accelerating the mortgage. But honestly, even when you have the all the other debts gone, I would say, hey, put more money in savings, emergency, reserve, build, continue to build that up. So the mortgage is going down while you're building this up. You can get access to savings. You can't get access to equity as easily. So these are some of the tips I always tell my clients. Round up the payment when you can. That's great. There's always a little extra to the mortgage. Never hurts. But get rid of other debts first. Build up your savings first. Then start tackling the mortgage. All right. That's about a 20-minute video there. I hope you had fun with that. Um, I don't know. I'll do a couple more. Let's see. Let's do. Let's see if I can regenerate a response here real quick. Oh, man. It takes a while to answer these, so I don't want to. <laughs> but this is kind of fun. We're five. You know, let's do this. Stop. I'm going to do this. Let's go. What are the five hardest mortgage questions? Ooh. Let's see if it has the hard. Oh, just change it back to hard. Okay. <laughs> really kind of fun. Let's see. Let's just generate for a second. Let's see if it comes up with anything else that's. I think it's kind of fun. Hope you're having fun watching the videos. Like I, I really enjoyed this. If you have questions, please post, comment, share. Let me answer your questions. You can check out my website, ryanbolton.com. You can schedule an appointment right there. We can meet over the phone at my office. I do lending throughout Utah and Nevada, but we're licensed in many states throughout the country, so I can definitely help you with any mortgage question you might have. Let's see if we can scan, see which one's the hardest one. How much can I afford? We kind of talked about that. Is it better to choose a fixed or adjustable rate? We kind of talked about that. There's pros and cons with every loan, whether it's a 15-year fixed, 30-year fixed, adjustable fixed. They all have benefits and disadvantages. So it's a matter of sitting down and kind of figuring out the long term plan. It even says right here, how long you plan on keeping the home. That's probably the biggest factor on an adjustable rate mortgage is how long you plan on keeping the home. Let's see what happens if I lose my job. We talked about that. How will the property be appraised? This question is important because the appraised value of the property will determine how much a lender is willing to lend and it can affect the borrower's ability to secure financing. That is completely correct. So the Every almost every loan out there is going to have an appraisal done of the property. This is a third party independent company that's licensed and has to go through a lot of regulation to be able to be an, a licensed appraiser. Their job is to go out there and, and check comparables, check whether homes have sold in the area that are similar square footage, age, quality, construction. There's a bunch of things that go into these appraisal reports, but every single uh, purchase typically will have an appraisal. Whatever it appraises for or the sales price, whichever is less is what determines the loan. So for instance, let's say you have a $500,000 sales price, but it only appraises at 480. Maybe it's got a lot of upgrades. Maybe it's got some features on it that don't really help its value. You've seen some people put some really crazy things in homes. Um, maybe that's an awkward lie. Who knows? Whatever the reason is, they wanted 500,000. They like the house. They appraise it at 480. The loan will be based on the 480. So this means your down payment is up based on the 480, the 20 grand difference you have to come up with out of pocket on top of the down payment because the loan goes off the lesser of appraised value or sales price, but also vice versa. Let's say that in the same scenario, you make an offer at 480 comes in at 500,000. It's not like that 20 grand you get to use as your down payment or, or any of those things. The loan is still based on the lesser of those two things. Also on an appraisal, depending on the type of appraisal, there's certain inspections that are required. FHA, VA appraisals have a little more inspection that the appraiser needs to do. They have to be trained to do a little bit more. They have to check furnaces. They have to check crawl spaces, roof uh, codes, like railings and stuff like that. Maybe there's a deck or staircase with some sort of railing that's missing. Those can be issue on FHA and VA appraisals. So they are a little bit more intricate, I would say. And they have more photos they're required to take. So, but really the appraiser is kind of the eyes to the lender. The lender is not going to drive by the house. They use the appraisal. They take a lot of photos, front, back, side, street view, take a bunch of different photos so we can see that the home actually exists. And there really is a home out there on 102 Main Street, you know, so, and which home it is actually tied to it. So how will a property be appraised? Um, one of the thing I would say is if you have an appraisal or you buy a house and you think you just go talk, don't just hire any appraiser, most of the time lenders can't use that appraisal report. It has to be third party, has to be independent. There's processes we have to go through to make sure that we're not 
communicating with the appraiser or have any kind of interaction with the appraiser before the report's actually in the office. So we can't just use a random appraiser. Even if he's licensed, approved, all that, if you just walked into my office and said, hey, I got this appraisal for 500000 I want a loan, we would still most likely have to do a new appraisal. Let's see what the last question is here. Boy, Soapbox City. <laughs> what are the closing costs and other fees associated with a mortgage? This question can be challenging because borrowers need to understand the various fees and costs associated with, associated with the mortgage, such as origination, fees, title fees, appraisal fees, and factor them into their overall budget. What is the closing cost and what other fees associated with the mortgage? So there are fees that are the same regardless of the type of mortgage. You're going to have appraisal fees. You're going to have the taxes and insurance that you're going to have to collect. Usually most mortgage companies, we're, we're no exception, have flat fees for processing, underwriting, funding fee. They're just kind of fees associated with generating that loan and covering the staff to draw the paperwork and send the wires out, underwrite the file, all those things. A lot of those are, are they're, sometimes they're even called junk fees when they're really not, but they're a flat fee that's just associated with every loan. Then you're going to have either loan discount or origination fees based on the rate you choose. So there'll be a par rate, which is just right, really close to no cost or no rebate that say is 7% today. You can use points to buy that rate down to say 6.5% or raise the rate to say 7.5% and get rebates. So you want to sit down with your mortgage company and just review those options of what, what some of those fees are. And I've, I've seen where like an extra half percent on the loan can make a big difference on the interest rate, where other times it takes like a full point to buy down only an eighth on the interest rate. So, and they change every day. Every day the market's changing, just like stocks, bonds, gas prices, mortgage rates change based on mortgage-backed security markets. So they can change on, on, a, on a daily basis. I've seen them change multiple times in one day. So that's where you have to sit down and just figure out what fee, what rate to fee combination works best with the loan you're trying to get. Points have been really popular lately because rates have moved up so much. But if you're not going to keep the home very long, points aren't don't make the most sense. If it's a forever home, last home, then yes, that's where points can make sense. But I always like to sit down with my clients and say, okay, here's here's the loan with no points. Here's the loan with the points minus the payment versus the cost and see where is that break even point. If it's <laughs> if it's 12 years before you even break even, you have to decide, is it, is it worth it? Most of the time, I would say it's about five years. Almost every time I've run the math on buying out mortgage insurance or paying points, unless it's excessive, usually it takes about five years to break even. And what I mean by that is it's lowering the payment by a hundred bucks a month or whatever it is, but it's costing 10 grand. You got to divide the savings by the cost. That's where your break even point is. That's really a number you should know when you're talking about points, talking with your lender about points, run the math on that. Find out, okay, how long do I got to keep the loan just to recoup this upfront fee that I'm paying in points today? If it's just not going to keep it that long, don't buy the points. Just keep the rate. There's always a chance to maybe refi, maybe rates drop in three, four years anyway. So I don't, I don't see this big push for points other than people like to see that their rate is under a certain number when they moved up. It's funny, when rates get close to that you know, five to six, six to seven, you know, when it goes kind of over that next tier, that's where you see a lot of people trying to get it back into that seven box or back into that five box. But you got to run the math on it. You really do need to run the math. And I tell people all the time, what's the most important part is what is that mortgage payment? What do you have to pay each month? And how does that compare to other housing expenses? And mortgages win out. Real estate, people that own real estate are going to win out in the long run. So whatever that payment is, that's what you can afford. That's the house you have to shop for. So I hope you found that interesting. Uh, 20, uh, boy, it's probably one of the longest videos I've done on the channel. So I try to keep about 20 minutes or so. But I thought this chat GTP is just kind of fun. So check it out for yourself. There's, you can ask this thing any kind of question. It's just great. Let's see. Uh, what is the best car? <laughs> That's what it says. Oh, maybe it doesn't even know. <laughs> oh, well, now it's going to freeze on me. So, oh, there it goes. Oh, I don't have personal preferences or opinions. <laughs> so I guess if it starts saying stuff like, what is the best of this? It becomes more of an opinion, but it's kind of funny. Oh, look at that. Anyway, I'll have it stop generating that. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you need help with a mortgage loan, I'd love to help you in Utah, Nevada, especially, but we do lending throughout most of the country. I think there's a few States back East that we don't do lending in because we don't have an office or something like that, but uh, we can help. I can help answer any questions, whether you use me or not, I'm here to answer questions, help you with anything. Uh, please consider me for your next mortgage or if you have any questions about buying real estate. Hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time.
Our-